Peden, who by CompuBox numbers landed 11 to 41. It's not always the number of punches you land. How effective are they? How big are they? Inside the Palumbo Center here. Both fighters have given a lot in the first eight rounds of the fight and our fight, and both fighters seem to be using the first minute of the ninth to get a little bit of a breather in there. Particularly Robbie Peden, who hadn't thrown much in this round. To fight with your hands down the way that Peden fights is not necessarily bad if you have very good reflexes and upper body movement. But outside of an occasional just bend down, he still doesn't have the kind of reflex, especially for a small fighter to fight with his hands as low as he's fighting. Well, of course, after having trained Tommy Hearns and some of the other great stars at Crunk Gymnasium, it would be wrong for you to say that a fighter has to have his hands up all the time. <laughs> no, but you know, Tommy knew what he was doing. So you never saw Tommy get him with those right hands like that. He would, he would push his left hand out and use it as a range to hold you at a distance. But uh, he's actually, Pete fights with his left hand down, but it's like he forgets that it's down. He fakes that it's up. Only a Rand Barkley really sneaked one in on Tommy, right? He did it twice. <laughs> Styles make fights. Yep. <laughs> Still to come tonight, the lightweight attraction between hometown hero Paul Spata for the Pittsburgh kid and Angel Manfredi. If you've seen Manfredi over the years, you know about his body, um, which carries tattoos from all of the many eras and experiences in Angel's life. Tonight, for the first time in his career, Manfredi will go into the ring against a body almost equally festooned with artwork. <laughs> As you called it, Larry, Rosetta Stones to their lives for yep. these two fighters. Rosetta Stone, Rosetta Stone versus Rosetta Stone. And uh, interestingly, Spadafora has a, a treasured family crest on his back, but not so treasured that he didn't sell the space to a dot-com betting operation tonight and obliterate a part of the centuries-old family crest in favor of... Filthy Lucre. <laughs> yes, from uh, Southern Italy, the family comes from. He says, uh, a lot of Spatophores. Well, let's hope none of the Spatophores are offended by tonight's preference for dot-com betting money. Harold, how do you have it through nine here? <laughs> oh. Harold, don't talk yet. They're trading shots. And they're trading shots at entertaining rate. Marquez trying to close the show as Peden, feeling desperate, comes to him. All right, now they slow down for a second. Harold, how do you have it through nine? Okay, Jim, 87, 84, six rounds to three. Stop, One man on Marquez. Back. Jim, I want to tell you, Peden sucked him into a slugging match in the last two rounds. Marquez bleeding from the nose, looking busted up. I think Peden got the best of him, you know, in that inside slugging, like they're doing right now. But here's a big Peden closed, you know, made it a little bit closer. 
So, six rounds to three. Juan Manuel Marquez. Interestingly enough, in that corner, you don't see them using any adrenaline in Marquez's nose. No Q-tips, no adrenaline. You know, it's interesting in scoring a fight. Maybe Peden may not have won some of those rounds that you've given him, but if what happens, you're starting to compare rounds. He does better in certain rounds than he's did in other rounds, so you're giving a round even though he really hasn't won that round. This is how Felix Trinidad wound up with a victory over Oscar De La Hoya. Yes. In a fight in which he didn't win enough rounds to win the fight, but because judges gave him some rounds looking for something better out of Trinidad, he ultimately wound up with a working That's margin. Right. That's right. In the last three rounds, he won when Oscar quit fighting. That's right. Not looking for something better out of Trinidad, he ultimately wound up with a working yeah, margin. That's right. In the last three rounds, he won when Oscar quit fighting. That's right. Not that he landed nothing, just the fact that Oscar quit fighting. And here, Eden did indeed gull Marquez into fighting more cautiously in the eighth and ninth rounds. As Marquez seemed to feel, well, maybe I've got the fight won, and with this bloody nose, I won't risk much. In fighting, you got to keep risking. you got to keep fighting. You can never ease up. A lot of great fights are lost because guys took a break the last round. Trickin' it, they won the fight, and then they end up surprised at the decision. Pernell Whitaker in the fight with Oscar De La Hoya. I felt that Oscar won the fight, even though Pernell maybe didn't get hit that much, but he took off the last three rounds, and Oscar kept fighting. And in certain states, certain commissions are giving instructions to their judges to give the fight to, to the guy who's trying to fight often whether he lands punches or not. We saw Leonard Doreen get a controversial decision over Raul Balbi a couple of months ago because Balbi seemed to feel that he had won the fight and Doreen kept fighting. Doreen kept fighting. Judges like to see a guy finish up strong in a fight. Regardless of if you won the fight or not, they really hate to see a fighter just take off and quit fighting at a certain point. And one thing Peden has going for him here is that Marquez has hit him a lot, but clearly has not been able to discourage him. Yeah, Marquez has hurt him sometimes this round, too. Where's the bucket? Put the bucket there. Stop the fight as Robbie yeah. Peden throws up in his corner. You saw him vomit into the bucket, and you heard Roger Bloodworth say, You can't fight like that. He's sick. Marquez tried to close the show in that last round, and he did. It's a beautiful performance. Yeah. Good display of punch and power and boxing skills. Technical knockout victory for Marquez extends to seven. The current knockout streak puts him in position for a title shot against Manuel Medina for the belt that Medina holds in the 135-pound weight class, or 126-pound weight class, I should say. But Marquez says, I don't want that belt. I want to fight for the one that Eric Morales now holds, regardless of what happens in the morales Barrera rematch. In June. He wants to fight one of the other Mexican superstars. He made a very strong statement for himself tonight. Uh, the most complete performance I've seen him in against a good, tough fighter. He's ready for uh, prime time. Closed the show, landing 30 of 58 punches in that last round, and you saw the effect on Peden as he got to his corner and threw up into the bucket. Yeah, he was bleeding inside very badly. Oh, yes. A bad cut inside of his mouth. The vomit was from swallowing blood. Yes. So that, that's the subject we discussed throughout the fight with regard to Marquez. At the end of the day, it's Peden who swallows too much of his own blood. Hey, hey, Fernando. What are you doing? So the two Marquez brothers have uh, stopped their opponents in the last couple of weeks. I don't recall us having brothers having done that in the past. Good for them. All right, let's go up to ring announcer Michael Buffer and get the official particulars on Marquez's TKO victory. Ladies and gentlemen, acting on the advice of position at ringside, referee Rick Steigerwald calls a halt to the bout. The official time, the end comes at round number 10, the TKO victory. He is Juan Manuel Marquez. Final round.
final copy box numbers and you see the total punches. Marquez landing nearly half of his punches in the fight and throwing eight punches per round more than Robbie Peden. Power shots ultimately made the difference, though Marquez was better with the jab as well. Landing nearly twice as many power shots, throwing 68 more of them and landing more than half of the power shots he threw in the fight. Outstanding performance by Juan Manuel Marquez. It's a pallet-laden division, the featherweight division, but uh, Marquez makes his statement for a bigger fight down the road. You heard what Larry Merchant had to say about it as he says this was Marquez's best all-around performance so far. We expect to see him in a big featherweight fight further down the road. Still to come tonight, the lightweight title battle. Belt to be sure, but an important belt 